Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I will show you three beauty photography tools I can't live without. I will show you what they are, how you can use them and where you can buy them if you want to try them out. And now let's start the video. The first thing I want to show you is a leaf blower. Yeah, you hear me right. It might sound funny, but actually this thing is amazing for photography. You can get this fun device at construction markets and you usually use it to blow away dry leaves that fall off trees in autumn. However, you can also use a leaf blower for photography. Normally photographers would use a bigger wind machine in a photo shoot, but a smaller leaf blower is far more convenient for me and my beauty shoots. But it doesn't only blow leaves away, it can also create really cool effects. Like moving the tiniest strands of hair in a soft way without ruining the whole hairstyle. And I also use it for product photography to turn the water surface into little waves. So people on set can direct the wind in a very target manner. You can also regulate the strength of the wind by yourself. And this is fantastic and allows you to try different ways of being creative. My unconventional wind machine is quite small, so it is easy to handle, really light and so convenient when traveling. But one of the best things about it is the battery pack, because there is no cable constantly in the way. But if you want a cheaper version, you can buy a wind machine with a cable. You will have to manage the cable, but you will be able to get just as creative, whether it has a battery pack or not. The price for a cheaper one is about 50 euro, while the version without the cable is around 95 euro. They are available at construction markets or on Amazon, but alternatively you can also buy more expensive ones from brands such as Makita. The second tool I want to introduce to you guys is the tether block. It's incredibly practical and a valuable gadget to have on set. It is a block that secures the cable under the camera and ensures that the cable doesn't break easily. When tether shooting, I connect my camera to my computer with a cable to see my photos on a bigger screen. To make sure that the cable is better attached to the camera and stays intact for a much much longer time, I need this tether block. But why is it so important for me? Let me tell you a little story. In previous photo shoots, my cables often broke and I thought that the cable quality was just really bad. I was always super annoyed and had to keep buying new ones. Then I came across the tether block and found out that it ensures that the cables are firmly attached. Embarrassingly, my problem was solved with it. And it wasn't an issue with the cables themselves, but the way I was handling them. If you add up the cost of dozens of new cables, you can see that it really pays off to buy a tether block. It's not the cheapest, but you can still save a lot of money while making a sustainable investment that will last for years. A good tether block costs around 100 euros. I know that sounds pretty expensive, so there might be an alternative which is much cheaper. But I've never used another one, so I can't say for sure that there is a good and long-lasting alternative to the real tether block. But it might be worth giving it a try if you're having the same cable issues I was. So summarized, this gadget is essential and life-saving for me. It is easy to handle and protects my cables from breakage when they are attached to my camera. And last but not least, the third very helpful item I would like to present you today is posing moods. Have you ever been right in the middle of a photo shoot with a newcomer model, about to shoot the next pose and then realized that the pose you told her doesn't look right on the model? This really is unfavorable, because now you have to take some time to think about another pose. And because I don't want to be in a situation like that, I always prepare posing moods for my shoots. And these are basically printed collections of different examples of specific poses. Over time I've noticed how incredibly helpful posing moods are during work. I can just take a look at the moods and don't have to constantly think about what she should do next. I always print them out and hang them next to me while shooting. They save me an incredible amount of time when I'm on set taking pictures. 
I can think in advance about which poses could go well with the planned look and collect as many as possible in order to have a good selection later. It is very important to have a good selection of different poses in your mood board in order to be able to decide afterwards which is the best pose for the pictures. Or you notice during the shoot that your favorite pose doesn't look good and without preparing enough posing moods you would be lost at that point. So believe me when I tell you that posing moods are really practical and essential for me on set. Personally, I have different posing pin boards on Pinterest, categorized by, for example, a solo model, a model posing with products, group shots and so on. I will link them in the video description so that you can check them out for your next shoot. Those were my three unusual but life-saving tools I use while taking pictures and which I can't live without. I hope they come in handy and you enjoyed this video. If so, please give this video a thumbs up and if you want to see more tips like this and behind the scenes of my photo shoots and challenges, then subscribe my channel.